Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, as you can see, we're looking back at the 65XE here. Um, I've got this uh, dual pokey PCB here from Lotharac. Uh, it comes with a socket actually, so you can, you know, I don't need to remove that. I don't need that socket stuck on there at the moment. Um, but yeah, that could actually help raise the height of it, you know, if you've got other socketed chips nearby. But I think it'll be okay without that extra socket, so we'll take that off. Uh, and you can see he's um, said a couple of things with this. It's got these nice gold plated uh, RCA follow jacks here, you know, panel mounted. Um, I'm not going to use those, I'm just going to go with a cable, a sticky cable out the back. If I just show you the back of the case here, just for the moment, um, got a hair trap there, just for the moment I'm going to run the wires out of that little gap there um, so that it's non-intrusive kind of thing. I don't really want to be cutting holes in the back of it, but I might do that at a later date. Um, so, you know, there'll just be a couple of um, these flying out the back uh, here. Uh, strictly speaking, I should use different colours to indicate the different channels, but I could always label them up. That's that's not going to be a problem. But uh, the other thing that came with the kit here uh, is this little PCB here. You can see, now this is uh, a U-switch. Now, this was a freebie uh, that he threw in, actually, but I do think he throws this in whenever people order this kit, as far as I can see. I've seen a few other videos on YouTube where people haven't bought it and it's just turned up. Um, so, the way this works is, if I look, I'll show you the PCB here. Uh, you've got your audio outputs here. You see we've got like uh, left, uh, left ground, ground, right. So that's where your audio uh, goes out to your, you know, your connectors. And then you've got these three connections here, SR, Bell, A4, sorry it's probably not focusing very well. So those run to various places in the system. So I've got a little uh, single pin uh, socket type thing, you know, that I can use for each one of those so that it's detachable and I'll just solder them onto their destinations in the system. But then the switch here is used to switch between stereo and mono and obviously your two pokies just go into your slots and this just goes into your pokey slot. Um, now this PCB, this is where this comes in, you can stick it over the top of that uh, switch position there, solder it on, um, I might be able to get a socket or something to stick under there, I don't know, so it's detachable, but yeah, in any case, solder it on, uh, and then up here, I think you've got a binary input, and you can run a wire from, uh, sorry it's not focusing, from that first point there to the um, ultimate 1 meg upgrade that I did in a previous video, there's a particular location on there that when in the, in the setup there, when you go into the settings, you know, you, I forgot you do, you just hold down option or something when you power on or help, I can't quite remember now. Mm -hmm. um, but when you go into the settings, one of the options to enable stereo mode or put it in mono mode, um, and it, it puts a high or a low on that pin, effectively, switching this little device. You need to provide uh, ground and uh, power, you know, power and ground there, VCC and ground, those are the last two connections. And I think the, 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 the t three pins that are not used there, like two, three and four, are used to toggle the logic there, you can invert it so that you know a high on here will switch it off rather than on etc. But I thought that was a really nice touch being able to do that in software using the menu there on the ultimate one meg um, you know to toggle between mono and stereo that's quite cool um, and like I said the address line is the key you know it goes to is it there A4 yes yeah, so I've got a connection going to A4 so you know at various points in time it can, it can address these independently of each other um, so you get, do get, you know, you can get true stereo with this, and there's a few games and demos and things that use it. Um, I've got a c couple of the best ones here that he recommends using, so I'll try try those out. I think one's you, um, and the other one's that like Newman demo. So uh, I'll have a quick play of those once I've uh, done this. But yeah, I need to get the lid off now. I'm not going to show you all that again. I've shown it on a few of the Atari 65XE videos, but yeah, get the lid off and um, get this board in there. So I've separated the socket from underneath the PCB there. Uh, so it should just be a case now of uh, just carefully aligning this uh, and pushing it into the socket. So you're better off with a turn pin socket below actually and that is what he provides. Uh, but yeah, that's alright, that makes a good fit. Let's just inspect it from all angles, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is, uh, you know, solder this onto here, uh, I think. I might just see if there's any way I can, um, if I've got any pin header that I can use, you know, female, so that I can just, it'll be modular, I don't know, I might try that, I'll go and have a look. Um, but then once we've done that, I need to run a wire from here to a position on here somewhere, I'm not sure where, I don't think. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it could be, could be that uh, first jumper there, but I thought that that was for XEGS mode. Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where that goes, that wire. It could be one of the pins on one side of the um, PCB here. So, yeah, I'll have to investigate that as well, because I'm not sure 
Um, I've not seen it documented anywhere actually in the stuff that I've looked at. So there you go, I need to clean the flux off there, but you can see I put a female uh, connector, just made it, chopped it up, you know, chopped the sides off just to get it the right uh, size, so there's just six pins. Uh, at least that's detachable from that perspective now. Uh, and I'll use these, I was going to use these in an earlier video, I didn't get a chance, just single pins that I can connect to the three uh, connections there, uh, and for the, the audio as well actually. So as you can see, I'm using one of these single pin connectors here. Can you see the top? It's got like that, those little wide wings. Those wings go around the, the plastic part of the uh, cable there. And obviously you just need to strip off enough of the wire so that it, it, it fills the length of the um, connection there. And um, then just crimp it. I might just try and solder it actually. Um, and then the final thing is to sl slide it over the uh, plastic uh, housing. And there you go, I've slid that over. As you can see, that's super tight. Um, there's no way that could come off. Uh, and the good thing is now, like I say, it'll be totally detachable. And this wants to go, um, just reading the manual, it says the MO pin. That will go high when it's switched into stereo mode. Uh, so as you can see, uh, yeah, nice and detachable. So here's a part of my update. You can see uh, we've got one wire there, you know, with a little connector, going to uh, the MO pin, um, which, as I said earlier, goes high when it's uh, switching the audio, it goes low when it's mono I think, um, connects here and then we've got uh, the VCC rail going to a pin header here just attached to that cap which is uh, on the supply rail so yeah it was just an easy way to, to do that I think rather than having it permanently soldered and then I've done the inverse, I've put the actual pin header part for the ground on there and taken it from the board, I think that's for an LED position actually you can have an LED on there that indicates whether it's in stereo or mono I'm not bothered about the LED so we use the ground for that uh, so those can't get mixed up, uh, that's that and then obviously we've got the 4 pin connector coming in here for the uh, wires coming at the back so I just need to get some uh, leads on those, you know, not the lead sockets um, it's a bit of a mess with the tape, uh, what I might do is uh, heat shrink that, I just need, I've not got the right size heat shrink so I'm going to order a couple of pieces of heat shrink of the right size and I'll revisit that off camera, uh, it's, but I do want to do it because it just looks a mess uh, and everything else looks pretty tidy. So the final thing to do now is just these wires here, I think we've got two or three, perhaps three, three wires that need to go uh, from here to relevant places on the board. So. Um, I'll probably have to do a similar thing I've done there, have a three pin connector and then uh, do the same thing I've done with these here as of a, a pins on top of the chips where those uh, three wires go so that they're totally detachable. So I think that's it, I could actually remove this wire, the SR wire doesn't seem to connect to anything uh, and as I say I will revisit these, just put a heat shrink on the actual individual connections then I can get rid of the tape because it just looks an eyesore but I haven't got anything small enough for the wires that I'm using here. Um, I did have some, it's just run out. So you can see what the A4 connection on the CPU here soldered on, uh, and the bell connection on the uh, GTIA, I think it is, here. Um, so I think we're good to go. I just need to plug my second so uh, pokey in, and then uh, connect the ultimate uh, mod back up. Um, and I should be good to go, I think. Here's a really obvious tip for you. Make sure you put the uh, housing on first before you solder your connector on. I fall for it every single time. There is not a time when I have not done that. I think maybe once, once recently, I might have done something first time and got it right. So that should be it now. Um, and bear in mind, like I said, this is temporary, and I've re routed out the expansion slot rather than the cart slot because I will be using the cart slot at some point. And you can see I put a cable tie there around the wires to act as a strain relief, just so you can't pull the connector off. These will be properly heat shrink to make them look tidy. I'll heat shrink that end off as well rather than having a, a tape, a piece of tape covering it up because the tape can come off, you know, you heat shrink it on nice and tight if you get the right size heat shrink it'll make a really good fit there and stop that from ever touching anything. Strictly speaking I could just change this to a two pin connector because it seems like that third one's not used but just for the moment I'm going to leave it that way because I'm not 100% convinced there's something missed from the instructions there. But uh, yeah I can get the lid on now and uh, we'll give it a try. So I managed to simplify this a lot here as you can see, I instead of having the connector there, I just found that was unreliable, it was just a really unreliable um, way of doing it, so I've soldered it on there permanently, um, and done the same thing with the two power, you know, the power and the ground wires, they just go, well, I think the ground just goes down here as I showed earlier, the VCC just goes underneath down to um, one of the pins on the pokey, is it pin 16, I can't quite remember, 16, 17. So that's maybe 17, it's the fourth from the bottom right of uh, pokey, that's where you get the VCC. Um, so everything else is the same there. Um, the one thing I will point out, as I have had problems with this, um, 
initially I reflowed the connections around uh, this this little PCB. It didn't resolve it. But what was happening is the sound was like really crackly. Um, it's almost like a, I don't know distorted. Um, you can't really see it, but under here, this little op amp, I reflowed that op amp because it didn't look so clever. That solved it. So this is really unfortunate. It's really unusual. You know, I've had mod, lots of mods off Lothrak in the past, never had a problem. I'll drop him an email just to let him know. Um, it's a shame I didn't capture it on camera, but to be honest, I was, I, got, I was tearing my hair out. I actually thought there was something wrong with one of the pokies at one point, but having ruled them out, you know, the, the first thing I did is obviously swap them around. The same problem was happening, then remove the board, just test the pokies individually. The sound was okay. So I knew there was something going on, but the thing that was confusing me is this switch module was not working because you have to join these two pins here, as you can see. Um, there's three three pins. There were three pins there. The first two you've got to join. I think you, if you want to invert the logic, you join the uh, the other two. So that was part of the problem. The other problem was the the connectivity. You know, the connectivity was really flaky. The connectivity on the ground was really flaky. Um, a lot of messing around. So yeah, I need to get some heat shrink as I say. I'll get another piece of tape around there. But those will be revisited with um, you know, some proper heat sh uh, heat shrink, and it should look pretty good actually once I'm done. But we'll test it now. Finally, switch it on. In fact, I'll just leave it down there. So, just so you can see the LED, if just point you um, sideways here so you can see the board, uh, the LED is just here. If I switch it on, you'll see the um, it's on there. So if I hold down help, it's just going to stop. Now it's off. So just showing you the behaviour when you change it over here, you'll see uh, I've just disabled it and the light is off, which is it's, that's off anyway. It's only it only shows its state when you boot. If I press S to save, Q to quit you'll see that that green LED just stays on its own. Now if I switch it off and on again, uh, hold down help if I can. Go back into setup here, and if I just go down to, sorry I know the camera's wobbling here, uh, sound, enable it, and if I put you back down here again, and I click S for save, Q for quit, do you see it switch on there? So it's now working. Um, before, it was not doing that at all. And like I said, the distortion is a secondary issue, which was, like I say, just need a, needed a reflow. I think what had happened is it looked like the thermal paste that they'd used, you know, the, the, the thermal, the solder paste, had not, uh, there was a very, very small amount of it just on one pin, and it looked, looked like it hadn't um, flowed very well. So I think that was the issue. So this game supports stereo. Um, I'm not, not sure how much it's you know, utilising it in terms of different instruments on different channels. You can see that it's a stereo detected, uh, which is uh, quite handy. Um, it sounds spatial, so I'm guessing that the, that's how they've used it. I mean, let's just start the game. That's definitely stereo. Different instruments on different channels there. Yeah, that's stereo, definitely. I can hear things coming from different sides. So an excellent game this, if you've not played this game, seriously suggest checking it out. Um, it'd be nice if this could get ported to something else on the platform, but then again it kind of, you know, it's unique to the Atari, it gives you a reason to want to play on the Atari actually. Yeah, fantastic. Right, I'll check out that Newman demo. Yeah, so straight away I can tell that stereo. Yeah, and I think if you watched my previous video there, where I did the memory upgrade, you can actually hear the difference. Yeah, more instruments. Stereo is fantastic actually on this.
not substantially related. And I'm well impressed. Dare I say that sounds like it could compete with the set, actually. So this game supports stereo sound as well. I mean admittedly there's probably more demos and things than there are actual games, you know, this is like a modern remake. Uh, so it's no wonder this supports stereo sound. I just swapped out that 27k resistor from a monitor as well, so I thought it was a good opportunity to test it with the sound on there. But uh, yeah, it's looking great and sounding great. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.